Welcome to another edition of Film Favorites, where I share my favorite films from India's many film industries. Now, today's film may seem odd considering the kinds of movies that I've been featuring in this show, but Jane Tu Ya Jane Na is succeeding perfectly, in my opinion, at its genre goal of a teenage rom-com and doing so with flair, playful storytelling, and an earnest sense of humor. I feel like this is a far better descendant of the classic Krishikesh Mukherjee-style rom-coms than the typical 1990s Bollywood love story. DDLJ, Kuchkuchote, and Mahabatain are all very stylized examples of the Bollywood musical that have become pretty much the poster child for the industry. But throughout Bollywood's history, there have been numerous directors and genre movements that acted nothing like DDLJ or Kuch Kuch Hote or the big family mega dramas by Suraj Parjatya. Jane Tu Ya Jane Na feels modern, but it has a tongue-in-cheek style with characters who feel more real and unique and almost throw back in some ways in terms of their quirkiness to the 70s classics like Golmal or Chupke Chupke. And I love the way the film sets up the story, as a story being told about this couple's romance while waiting for them at an airport where the climax of the film would take place. It sets it apart from the typical easy tropes that characterize so many Bollywood films, blockbuster Bollywood films, using a diary, using flashbacks, dancing in Switzerland to break up the narrative. The movie is self-aware, but it's not indulgent. The songs by Eher Rehman all fit the effervescent mood of the film, but are serious when they need to be. And the music is not just good because of what Rehman does with the dance numbers, but his incidental background music really brings this final act home. When Imran's character is on the way to the airport at the end, in a very cinematic way, it is very cinematic musically, it's very cinematic the way it's shot, the way a climax should be. And that brings me to Imran Khan. You know, there are dynasties in every entertainment industry and Imran is an insider. He had a way in and I've heard many bad mouth his performances and some of his movies have been throwaways, but who in any entertainment industry is any different? But I defy anyone to question his performance here. He shows the full range of emotions in the course of the movie. He is more than just a pretty face or a melodramatic boy toy in a spectacle. He's a real, believable, coming-of-age protagonist. And then there is, of course, the leading lady, Janelia D'Souza, who really owns the role of a firecracker of a friend-zoning girlfriend who is scrappy in all the best ways. Ratna Patak Shah and Nasruddin Shah show up as well in supporting roles, and their parts are so fun. They're both so good in everything they do anyway, and though they're only on screen for about 10 or 15 minutes, they just steal the show with a really well-integrated backstory, supporting conflict, I guess you could say, that ties into Imran's arc perfectly. And there's this hilarious double cameo from Arbaz and Sohail Khan that, again, could just have been a throwaway joke and random cheap conflict to up the masalability of a lesser film. But here, again, their appearance plays an integral role twice in the film in advancing Imran's character and helping him along his journey to adulthood in unforeseen ways. This is just a fantastic, lighthearted, coming-of-age film. It's mainstream, I get that, but I think we should celebrate the mainstream when they get it right, when they hit their genre goals correctly. This is up there with Mean Girls, in my opinion, in terms of coming-of-age stories. If there is a criticism, it could be that Janelia's character does little more than serve as a damsel in distress in the last act and a half, which proves that the film is primarily a male coming-of-age story. I'm not sure how they could have changed that and retained the punch of the climax, so without an understanding of how to correct the film, I'm not going to fault it. I think it succeeded at what it's trying to do, so I give Johnny Tu Ya Johnny Na four and a half stars as a coming of age rom com, and I give it the XD near the top of my emoticonometer. What other movies would you like to see considered for this list? Do let me know in the comments and let us know what you think of Johnny Tu Ya Johnny Na. And let us know if there are any films in its genre that you prefer to the film. Until next time, keep it creative, keep it cross-cultural, constructive, and help me in my quest to find and celebrate the best films that India has to offer. Thank you so much for watching The Surfing Violinist. Check out our web series, American Indian, the more polished documentary style reality show version of our family's adventures in India. New episodes each month. Support the show on Patreon to help us keep improving by clicking here and get to see new episodes a month in advance. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep it creative, keep it cross-cultural, and keep it constructive, YouTube. Thank you very much.